Good morning and welcome to worship on this, the third Sunday after the Pentecost. It is a good time and place for us to be church wherever we happen to find ourselves gathering. Um, we hope that you are well where you are at. Uh, the only service-related announcements that I have are the bulletin can be found online at our website and the words to the uh, hymns and any sort of uh, responsive uh, readings can be found at the bottom of your screen. With that, we begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is Lift High the Cross.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Savior and Lord. Close friends are watching 
are walking for me to stumble. Perhaps we can, we can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our refuge on him, revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. He will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal desire will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my, committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of, from the hands of, of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the sixth six chapter of Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that the grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him, in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this day, according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of, this, of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you have whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. 
Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to all of you on this day. From God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Jesus says some scary things, some hard-to-hear things, some really unsettling things this morning in our Gospel reading. I have not come to bring peace but a sword, for I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now, if we're honest, if these words didn't have Jesus' name on them, we would consider them the ridiculous demands of an evil person, possibly the leader of a crazy cult, like Charles Manson or that guy in Nigeria who captured all those schoolgirls. All of us have gathered as church this morning because in one way or another, we consider ourselves to be Christians and we have a desire to live a good life. And we believe that part of that, that effort to lead a good life is attending church and hearing the Bible read and sermons preached on what we've heard. And after hearing this morning's reading, though, we have to ask ourselves, how is all of this stuff about wielding swords and family feuds supposed to help make me a better Christian? How is this supposed to help me live out my faith in daily life? Seriously, what's going on here? I heard a story from a colleague that took place a few years back. A young woman who had an appointment with my colleague had arrived a little early and was shown into the office to wait. And as my colleague came into the office after attending a meeting, the young woman turned from the wall where she had been looking at all of the various diplomas, and she pointed at one and said, what is spiritual direction? My colleague fumbled around for an answer, and then finally said something like, well, people come in to see me, and I listen to them talk about their life, sort of like going to a counselor. But instead of whatever a therapist might say, a spiritual director tries to help people find where God is in their life. That's funny, she said. I should think it would be more important for them to figure out where they are in God's life. Things change when we turn the question around, don't they? Instead of asking, what is God doing to make my life better, more whole or more spiritual, the real question really ought to be, what am I doing to involve myself in the work and will of God in the world today? How am I helping make visible the kingdom of heaven here on earth? Now, seen in this light, the scary, uneasy, and even crazy things that Jesus said start to make a little bit of sense. If you are going to go with Jesus, you have to be ready to go all the way. If you're going to go with Jesus, you have to be prepared to choose the kingdom of God over your neighbors, your family, and most especially over yourself. You know, I've done in my 14 years of ministry hundreds of baptisms. Most of them babies, and there are a handful of adults, of adults in there too. Never once, as we were preparing for that day, did a parent or a sponsor or even a member of the congregation or the one being baptized ever say, now wait a minute, let me think about what it means to be baptized into Christ. I thought it was just a little bit of water. You're talking about death and resurrection. You're talking about following Jesus into the world. You're talking about discipleship. And that could get downright messy and complicated. Loving and serving the people Jesus loved? It's not easy following Jesus, that's for sure. Indeed, it is a life that is full of challenge and discomfort. A life that is even compared to death. Right? Jesus says, after all, those who lose their life for my sake will find it. And the Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Romans, writes, We were baptized into his death and old self was crucified with him and we have been united with him in a death like his. 
following Jesus, you see, is not so much about finding where God is at in our life. It is more about finding those places where we are called to be in God's life. What are we called to do in the kingdom of God? Ultimately, the hard, crazy, scary, and unsettling things Jesus has said to us in our gospel reading are still hard, but maybe not so crazy or even scary after all. They're not crazy because they tell us a hard truth about this life, a truth that every one of us needs to learn in order to be truly and completely human. And that is this, that it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about you and how many people like you or about you and your family. It's not about you and your successful, prosperous life. It's just not. And you know what? The sooner we learn this, the happier we are. The ego says, if it's not about me, well, what is it about? Well, the answer, it's about God, of course, and of God's love for the entire world, the whole creation, in fact, from the hairs on each of our heads life of sparrows to the fate of the earth and the future of the human race. It's all about God and God's will and God's way and our place in that grand movement into God's promised tomorrow. We are called to be a part of the new heaven and the new earth that God is actively creating right now. The things Jesus says this morning aren't so scary and crazy because they contain with them, within them the promise of resurrection. The promise that we will also be a part of that new thing that God is doing. Those who lose their life will find it, Matthew's Gospel says. And in Romans, Paul reminds us that we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Jesus, dear ones, invites us, you and I, to take up a cross, our cross and follow him. And well... He isn't very specific about what that means. There's no job uh, contract or job description. Jesus invites us nonetheless to give up all and follow him, to be the very hands and feet that usher in the kingdom of heaven into the world. You know, and that has me wondering, how have you responded to that invitation? How have you taken up your cross? Have you found your place in the kingdom, kingdom work? In Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus.
I invite you now to confess your faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another. The differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have become ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds and their habitats. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith as we give thanks for those who have died. Increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we go on our way today... We do so singing, I love to tell the story.
beloved, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.